Hey oh guys this is a story about what if Naruto, the melt. As a child, Naruto is taken in by Sarutobi to be his chosen successor to the mantle of Hokage. He develops a bloodline long thought lost to the world and learns along the way that, though he may be hated for his demon, his will of fire will burn brightly. And let's see what changes will come to Naruto verse but before we start don't forget to give a like and subscribe to this channel for more what ifs and check the description for the creator of this great fanfic, now let us start. Chapter 14, Psychological Warfare and here's Chapter 14. I like this one, I really do, I hope you enjoy it too. Readers, reviewers, thank you. Be like that by three doors down. Chapter 14 Naruto followed the three superior ninja closely his blank mask firmly in place and his new cape billowing behind him. Being the junior in a group of experienced ninjas made him very nervous, especially considering all three were there to help apprehend one man. Naruto had read the file on Mizuki before. The man was a high chunin, low junin level ninja, but had been passed up for the junin rank because of, mental issues. Enko noticed her pupil's silence and guessed he was brooding about what he was going to have to do. They were behind Mizuki by nearly half a day, leaving them with a little time to plan. But it was now approaching nighttime and that would be a big boon. It helped that the man was in such a rush that he was leaving noticeable signs of where he was going. A broken twig here, a drop of blood there, a thread of clothing attached to a branch, the man left signs everywhere and the skilled Anbu who was with them followed the small trail like it was a freeway. Hey brat, whatcha thinking about it? Naruto cut his eyes over to her briefly, not that she saw it behind the mask. He took a leap onto another branch and kept up his pace while they spoke. I'm trying to think of how you want me to capture him without killing him. I have a few ways I can think of, but he might lose a limb. Anko smirked and leapt lightly from branch to branch. Learning how to talk and tree hop at the same time was a skill vital to Konoha ninjas. Doesn't matter if he loses a limb, just so long as you get the information. Capturing him is the easy part of Naruto. The hard part will be getting information from him. The blonde nodded and turned his gaze back forward. Before he could retreat into his thoughts again, Enko's devious side struck. So, what's the deal with you, the Hayuga, and the Yamanaka? You three got a little three-way going on. Ibiki and the Anbu visibly perked up when they heard this, but kept their eyes on the path. Nothing like some teasing to lighten the tension. Enko grinned since she could practically feel the heat coming off of Naruto. Sensei. We're on a mission here. Try to be a little objective. Ah come on Naru-chan. Who's the best kisser? Who's got a better body? The world wants to know. I'm 12, you psycho. But you're almost 13. You'll be 13 not long before you graduate. Don't tell me you haven't already cut a pony from the herd. Ibiki and the Anbu landed in a small clearing not far ahead of them and Anko's smirk grew bigger when her charge wouldn't answer her. Naruto. Still no answer. So, you're not gonna tell me which girl you like better. Silence. Anko used her superior speed to get behind him and draped herself over his shoulders, one of her favorite positions to tease him from, as she rubbed her cheek against his. Or, are you saving yourself for a little old me? Do you have a fetish for older women? I'd love to be the one to pop your cherry. Ibiki and the Anbu chuckled when they heard the boy gurgle and decided to stop Anko before she began undressing the poor lad. Anko, Naruto, come over here. Mizuki isn't far ahead. He's been running all out for hours now and he's probably either stopped completely or is running slower. We've found no indication that he has soldier pills or that he ran across any travelers or other ninjas with supplies. We will assume he is armed though and he has his jutsus though he should be about out of chakra. He is more than likely hungry and his thinking and reactions will be sluggish. The Anbu looked from one face to the other and noted with some surprise that Naruto didn't look confused in the slightest. The rumors that the boy was somewhat mature beyond his years was not unfounded. The Anbu blinked behind his mask and focused on Naruto. We didn't have much time to prepare you for this mission. In truth, we could have taken a few moments to let you go and get some gear. But, this is part of your appraisal. You'll be placed in situations sometimes where you'll have nothing but your hands. Luckily, you carry your field knife with you at all times, so you have that. That's all you'll have this go around. Your mission is to subdue the enemy without killing him. You'll have to interrogate him later. Naruto nodded and fingered the hilt of his knife, 
comforting himself with the way the leather felt against his fingertips. He just couldn't wrap his mind around what he was about to do. Anbu san, I'm not even a genin yet, and Mizuki is a high chunin level ninja. All I have is my field knife. Anko frowned at her student and whacked him in the back of the head. You also have personal training from the best ninjas in the village, a keke genke that nearly guarantees success, and a mind that will allow you to plan this through. You have every weapon you need. You'll do fine, Naruto. We'll be just on the perimeter, watching you. If anything goes wrong, we'll jump in and stop it. The blonde settled down noticeably after that and began to plan ahead for what he was going to do. The Anbu stiffened suddenly and nodded to Ibiki. The cage Bunshin I sent ahead has confirmed that Mizuki is a mile away, hiding in a cave that goes back about 50 feet. He has set a few rudimentary traps around the entrance to alert him to any pursuers and has somehow procured a few shuriken and kanai, from the looks of things. The white mask that the blonde was wearing bobbed up and down at the report. Anko and Ibiki stayed quiet during the talk. This was Naruto's show, to run as he saw fit. Did the clone see how Mizuki himself looked? He was huddled in a far corner, drifting in and out of sleep I believe. It was hard to tell in the dark. You can tell he's fatigued though, because his traps, though crude, were poorly and hastily laid. He shouldn't be much trouble for you. Thank you Anbu-san. If you can create a clone to lead me to the cave, I'll begin extraction. Anko blinked, surprised at her student's professional tone. She could only hope and pray that things would go smoothly. With Mizuki as tired as he was, it shouldn't be too hard and then Naruto could make his first interrogation. She could only imagine what his methods would be. Ibiki shook her from her thoughts and motioned for her to follow him. They followed the Anbu just outside the cave and waited for the fireworks. Naruto wordlessly followed after the ANBU's shadow clone, weaving through the brush like a ghost. The clone never once looked back and when it got to the edge of the clearing around the cave, it turned to Naruto and bobbed its head in a nod, before dispelling itself. Naruto took his knife out of its scabbard and closed his eyes, before melting into the ground slowly. He opened his eyes to the black and white world of the melt, the sensations that came along with it assaulting his senses, but he quickly got them back under control. He saw the traps Mizuki had set up and shook his head. It wasn't becoming a ninja of Mizuki's caliber to set up such slipshod traps. What confused him was the fact that there were more than just Mizuki's tracks present. He hadn't been told that there was more than one man they were pursuing. He moved through the ground slowly, cautiously approaching his prey. He was becoming more and more exacted by the minute and that reflected on the thoughts of the demon inside him. Yes, the hunt, the chase, the thrill, the blood. Naruto was too excited himself to even pay attention to the Kayabi's ramblings. He was caught in the moment, all fear gone, the adrenaline kicking in. This was what was expected of a Konoha ninja, to kill in the name of the village so that your friends and family would be safe. That thought steeled his resolve. He wouldn't ever let another incident like the one with his mother happen if he could help it. And if eliminating these missing nins was part of that, then so be it. He maneuvered through the ground until he came to the stone of the cave and moved through the new material seamlessly. He and Anko had done extensive work on being able to move through substances without stopping and the fruition of their efforts showed here. Naruto moved to the roof of the cave and observed his quarry. Two men were asleep beside a small fire while one sat on watch for the hunter nins. They were all obviously tired and the one on watch kept nodding in and out of sleep. Naruto weighed his options and began to move to the top of the cave. He had had information deliberately kept from him. If it weren't for the fact that he was undectable while using his keke genke, he would have been killed by the three men probably. This was a test for him though and he had to pull through. He couldn't disappoint his grandfather and all his senseis after all the work they'd put into him. Mizuki was to be taken alive if possible and the other two were expendable. Naruto shuddered as he thought of that word, expendable. Like they were items to be used and thrown away. Humans in general are expendable, Naruto was halfway convinced by now that the Kaiubi couldn't really converse with him and that he was picking up the beast's random thoughts. He could be wrong, but he wasn't about to try to make contact with the thing. Now he had to think how he would go about this. He couldn't just go in and capture Mizuki while he eliminated the other two, or could he? Naruto formed six clones and sat down cross-legged to discuss strategy with them. Okay look, I need two of you to take out the unknown ninjas. Quiet, 
Just like Enko Sensei taught us. I want them to feel as little pain as possible, so I want you to put your knives through their brains. Just, try to be humane. Two of the clones nodded and Naruto turned to the rest. I want you all to focus on Mizuki. We have to take him alive so subdue him and I'll run damage control. Remember, if we eliminate the other two first, it's for the better. We don't know what they're capable of so they have to go. Alright, let's do this. The clones nodded and watched as Naruto melted into the stone before following suit. The blonde in the white mask watched as his doppelgangers moved into position and waited for the moment to strike. Months working with his Keke Jenke had yielded very fruitful results. Having nothing to go on, it was like building a model from the ground up with no instructions. You put a piece here, see if it fits, and if it does, go with that. They'd found out that not only was Naruto faster in the ground and able to melt into virtually anything, but his clones could melt as well as he could, albeit at a slower pace. It was still extremely useful, and potentially deadly to the enemy. The only thing they hadn't ventured into was trying to melt into and with other humans. Naruto didn't want to think about what might go wrong and Anko wasn't willing to let him experiment on her if something did go wrong. He could understand that, but the possibilities. His clones were in position and Naruto forced his arm down, signaling for them to begin. One of the clones moved toward the upright man while another went to the sleeping ninja. At the same time they melted out of the ground. The man who was on guard had been dozing lightly when he felt a hand clamp around his mouth and his eyes opened just in time to stare into the fire before light burst into his vision and everything faded to black. There had been a slight twitch in his temple and everything bled black. The clone had clapped a hand over his mouth before jamming the field knife in the man's head and twisting. The sleeping man never even woke up or noticed that he had been killed. The clone jammed the knife directly into his ear, killing him instantly. The man had met the Shinigami without ever knowing how in the hell he had gotten there. Naruto melted out of the ground slowly, the cloak around him giving him an amorphic shape, his white mask yielding nothing about his expression. The sight behind the mask would have given anyone pause, as the usually cheery blonde's face was frozen in a grimace of acceptance. He didn't want to do this, but he had to. The clones that had killed the men stepped behind him and watched as their fellow clones melted out of the ground and knelt beside each of Mizuki's limbs. They turned their blank masks on Naruto and he gave them a single nod to start. They turned back to the man laying spread eagle on the floor and two grabbed his ankles, while the other two grabbed his hands so he couldn't perform any jutsus. Mizuki felt his hands being clasped and leapt to his feet. The clones let him stand before the two behind Naruto ran forward and slammed their shoulders into Mizuki's torso, throwing him against the wall and holding him there while the others melted into the wall, effectively nailing him to the stone behind him, in a crucifix position. Mizuki's eyes were wide and he was now fully awake and aware of the bodies holding him. He looked across the dimly lit cave to see the small figure that stood unmoving, its features hidden by the cloak and mask. His breath caught in his throat when he realized what had happened. Anbu. His gaze darted around until he found his cohorts lying on the ground and slumped against the wall, both dead with wounds to the brain. This person, for he did not know who it was, had snuck into the cave, evaded their traps, and killed his cohorts without waking any of them. He did the only thing he could think of. He screamed. Anko, Ibiki, and the Anbu heard the shrill scream and immediately rushed into the cave, skimming over all the crude traps. Anko was the first one in and was just in time to hear Naruto growl exasperatedly. Would you please shut the hell up? Mizuki didn't have time to answer before Naruto flipped his blade over in his hand so that it was held backwards and jammed the hilt forward right into Mizuki's forehead, knocking him out cold. His body went limp in the clone's arms and Naruto turned to the entrance. About time you three showed up. You could have told me that there were two more guys. Anko winced at the coolness of the boy's voice. It was a tone that didn't suit Naruto and she knew he was trying to maintain his composure. He just didn't like to kill, even though he had done so beautifully. The two lying in steadily widening pools of blood were evidence that the boy had talent. Naruto, this was a test. Albeit, a hastily thrown together test, but a test of your skill nonetheless. You only have one more part to complete. Can you do it? The blank mask swung to Ibiki and he gazed back at the boy as if disinterested. He had to know if the boy could go through with his initiation. Naruto looked toward where Mizuki was held against the wall inside. 
Enko walked over to him and put her hand on his shoulder. Do you want to go back to Konoha and take some time before the interrogation? Naruto shook his head and shrugged her hand off as he turned to face Mizuki. No, better to do it here while I still have the nerve to do it. Enko stepped back to Ibiki and the Anbu. She couldn't guess what her protege would do. Naruto grimaced behind his mask and took a few deep, calming breaths. He'd need all his nerve to do this, all of his wits. Any mistakes could be disastrous. He couldn't afford to slip up. Without turning around, Naruto queried to the Anbu. What do I need to find out? Mizuki has been involved in questionable acts for many years now. We need to know who he is working with and anything else you can figure out. Naruto nodded and turned back to the man pinned to the wall. His clone simply stared at him as he walked forward. Once he stood before Mizuki, he cocked his fist back. Make him feel pain, and slugged Mizuki in the jaw as hard as he could. The silver-haired man's eyes fluttered and he slowly raised his head. He couldn't figure out why he couldn't move his arms until he looked to the side and found his body held to the wall by, hands that came out of the wall and two clones of the man before him. He started to scream again when the cloaked figure appeared in front of him and clamped a hand over his mouth. Quiet, do not scream. I have questions to ask you and you will answer them. If you answer my questions to my satisfaction, I will speak to the Hokage about lessening your sentence. He removed his hand from Mizuki's mouth and the man glared at the white mask, having regained his composure. I don't believe that for a second. Like a nameless Anbu has any pull with the Hokage. Naruto slowly reached his hand up to his mask. A nameless Anbu having pulled with the Hokage, no. But... He pulled the mask all the way off and threw the hood back, revealing who he was to his one-time sensei. The grandson of the Hokage, yes. Now, let's talk. Mizuki snarled and lurched against his captors, yielding no results. Damned demon, even here you torment me. You should be dead, you should have died when you were sealed. I'm not a demon, it is sealed. Now, my questions. I'm not telling you anything demon. You are a worthless piece of filth. All my supposed crimes against Konoha are nothing compared to yours. I owe you and the village that turned its back on me nothing. Naruto smacked the man in the mouth, keeping that emotionless look on his face. It was hard to keep it up, but the more Mizuki talked, the less he cared about the man's welfare. Interrogating a man that he loathed made torturing him all the more, satisfying. If he won't talk, make him bleed, Naruto grit his teeth and shook his head. He didn't need the Kyubi speaking up now. He needed to concentrate. You'll tell me who you are working with and why. You'll tell me what I want to know, or I will make you wish for death. Mizuki sneered and spit in Naruto's face. The three older ninjas watched unflinching. This was the usual back and forth that most went through. Very rarely would an enemy crack at the beginning. A very loud growl cut through the silence and Enko shuddered, making the other two turn to her as she whispered lowly. Kami. I hate it when he does that, the Anbu watched as Naruto bared his fangs and advanced on Mizuki again. He had to admit, the boy got points for intimidation and enthusiasm. If things persisted in this way for very long though, he would have to call him off. How does he do that? Does he massage the throat with chakra? And can it be taught? Anko shook her head and watched as Naruto grabbed Mizuki by the throat. It's a natural thing, he doesn't use chakra to make that noise. It's been confirmed by Hyugas. We think it's a defense mechanism from having the Kyubi, kind of like his fangs. Scares the hell out of the people when he does it though. Naruto slammed Mizuki's head back against the wall and gripped the man's forehead tightly forcing him to make eye contact. Mizuki was scared stiff after that growl. It only confirmed that the boy was indeed the Kyubi. Fear. The fear is so tasty, tell me what I want to know or I'll make you wish that the Shinigami would come to claim you. D. Demon. Naruto slammed his fist to the left of Mizuki's head, leaving an imprint in the rock. He was tiring of mind games. No wonder Anko preferred the direct approach. I'll make you wish I was the demon. Who are you working with? I'm, I won't tell you anything. Naruto could see that Mizuki was breaking. Time to pull out some more stops. So, the man was afraid of Kyubi huh? Well, he'd give him Kyubi. Naruto stepped back from Mizuki and cracked his neck. This might break the man's mind, but, he wouldn't know until he did it. Naruto's hand sunk into his cloak and he subtly made the sign for Cage Bunshin. 
One burst into existence and Naruto bade it come closer, so he could whisper into its ear. Get behind me and henge into a smaller version of the Kyubi. Then, while the smoke obscures the vision, I'll melt into the ground. You act as it would. The clone nodded and moved behind him to do as it had been told while Naruto turned back to Mizuki. If you think I am the demon, then who am I to try to change your mind? I'll give you what you see. I'll give you your demon. Just remember Mizuki, you could have done it the easy way. The clone behind him performed the henge and as the smoke covered him, Naruto melted into the ground. When the smoke cleared, it revealed a snarling, frothing Kyubi in miniature form advancing slowly on Mizuki, one inch at a time. The silver-haired man began to shake violently and struggled against the clones, but to no avail. No, no, damn you all. Stop him, he's let the demon loose. Yes, fear is truly worthy of gazing upon my visage, even in a smaller form. The three senior ninjas stood silently, amazed that Naruto would use such an underhanded tactic as to prey on the man's fear. Enko was both proud of her pupil, and sad that he had taken to her profession so well, even against his better judgment. It seemed the boy truly had no say in what his life would lead him to. Naruto watched from the ground as Mizuki began to rant and rave. He promised to tell them anything they wanted to know, as long as they would take the Kyubi away, seal it away again. In the pit of his stomach, Naruto felt sick. He had preyed on a man's fear of getting information. But it had to be done, in the name of Konoha. Mizuki cried and pleaded as the clone advanced ever so slowly until Naruto melted out of the ground in front of the fox look-alike. Dispel yourself. Your job is done. The fox looked Mizuki dead in the eye and waved its tails widely before a huge grin split its face. The man whimpered and looked to Naruto for mercy. Please, I'll tell you whatever you want to know, just don't let him near me again. Tell me what I want to know. Mizuki told him everything. That he had been marked by Orochimaru, that he had planned to steal the forbidden scroll before he left but the security was too tight, that he had killed teammates before being weak. The more Naruto listened to the man, the more his pity and loathing for the man grew. Mizuki was a pawn, who knew nothing. He didn't know where Orochimaru was or any of the man's plans. Mizuki had been mentally disturbed but no one had reached out to help him. He had been jealous and greedy for power, by any means necessary. Naruto closed his eyes, afraid to open them for fear of seeing Mizuki's face. One last thing Mizuki. Why do you hate me? There was no hesitation in his answer. Because you're a demon. Naruto opened his eyes and turned to the three behind him, the Anbu in particular. Is that enough? The Anbu nodded once and Naruto stepped forward to Mizuki and drew his knife. Your crimes against Konoha are heavy Mizuki. There is only one punishment for your transgressions. Mizuki started to scream when he saw Naruto heft the knife, but before any sound escaped his lips, cold steel had embedded itself into his throat. Naruto watched the man gurgle and eventually his eyes went blank, signifying his death. Without a word, Naruto dispelled his clones and turned to go outside, not paying attention as Mizuki's body hit the ground with a thump. Death. A kill to be admired and proud of, Enko reached out to him as he passed by. Naruto. He didn't say a word as he brushed past her. Enko looked to Ibiki for help. Go talk to the brat. He needs someone right now. It was his first real time, and he did it beautifully. We'll take care of the cleanup. Enko nodded and started to chase after the boy, but retrieved his knife first. Naruto always felt better with his knife in his hand and it might comfort him now. She didn't have to look far. He was sitting on top of the cave entrance, about 20 feet up. She leapt into the air and landed beside him. Here's your knife kiddo. You did good back there. I think the Anbu was impressed. Naruto said nothing, just stared out into darkness with his arms wrapped around his knees. Naruto, you did what had to be done. Hokage-sama will be so proud of you. He still said nothing and she saw tears forming at the corner of his eyes. Enko sighed and sat his knife down beside her before she enveloped the boy in a hug. Come on Naruto, just let it out. I won't tell anyone. And he cried. And he wailed. And he bawled. Enko just held him with her eyes closed. This was perhaps the first time that a man had gotten this close to her without getting his throat slit, and the only person who had ever been close to her chest. She might be a tease, but Anko was picky about her men, and no one had ever been good enough. 
She waited until Naruto's sobs quieted down and he settled into small sniffles and hiccups. He finally began to shift out of her grip but she kept her arm around his shoulder. So, ready to talk about it. Naruto shifted around, getting more comfortable in her hold. I comma I can't believe I did that Enko sensei. I preyed on that man's fears and broke his mind. I killed him. I could see the fear in his eyes as I took his life. Am I a monster? Enko squeezed him tightly and forced him to look her in the eyes. Listen to me Naruto. Listen good. You're not a monster. Everyone has told you this many times over the years. You did what you did in the name of Konoha, as a ninja of Konoha. There's one problem with that sensei. I'm not a ninja from Konoha yet. The two were silent after that. It was true, Naruto wasn't a ninja yet. But he had the heart of one. He had gotten past the most difficult stage as best he could. So what if he broke down and cried? He was just a boy. Now, he was more. I can hear it sensei. Enko looked down at her student and squeezed him tightly. Hear what brat? Naruto smiled softly at that nickname. It comforted him somewhat. The Kyubi. It was speaking while I interrogated Mizuki. It said my kill was something to be admired and something to be proud of. Enko stiffened and her grip loosened slightly. It talks to you. Naruto nodded and turned his eyes to the ground. Does the Hokage know? Naruto nodded again. Yeah, but I don't talk back to it. I don't acknowledge it. I refuse to. I won't let it influence me. Enko grinned and stood up, dragging the blonde up with her. I'm proud of you brat and I'm sure everyone else is as well. Let's go home, and remember to clean your knife off. Blood leaves stains otherwise. Naruto smiled sadly and wiped the blade off on his pants leg. Eventually, everything would be alright. Sarutobi stared at everyone in his office, the three ninja and the lone academy students. Report the Anbu gave a very detailed report of the proceedings, with everyone else chiming in at the appropriate time. The only one who remained silent was Naruto. Naruto, I've heard all that your superiors have to say. Do you have anything to add? The blonde slowly let his vision settle on his grandfather. All I want is to just enjoy the rest of the school year with no more missions, no more paperwork, no more hardcore training. Let me be a normal student for the rest of the year. Please Gigi. Sarutobi nodded his head in understanding. If anyone deserved a break, it was Naruto. Not even a full-fledged ninja yet, and already fulfilling his duties in the name of the village. Very well Naruto. I agree to that. Consider yourself on leave from your duties. You'll still need to keep your skills sharp though, so Enko will help you on her off days. Naruto nodded and bowed to his grandfather. Can I be dismissed now? I'd really like to rest. Sarutobi nodded. I'll see you at home later Naruto. Once the boy was gone, Sarutobi folded his hands and leaned on the desk. Now, tell me your unbiased opinions without the boy here. No sugarcoating. Eri had been waiting up for Naruto for what seemed like hours, Yahiko trying to keep her calm. They'd been through several pots of tea already, but nothing seemed to settle her nerves. When she heard the door slide open, her head flew up and she gasped when she saw her son. Naruto was the epitome of a broken child. Gone was her innocent son. In his place, was a shinobi who wasn't even yet a shinobi. She wrapped him in a hug, ignoring the blood on him. She didn't have to ask what had happened. It had already been explained to her beforehand. Mom, can I sleep with you and dad tonight? Just this once. She smiled down at him and kissed the top of his head. Of course my son, just this once. Naruto showed up at school like nothing had happened. He had talked it over extensively with his father and grandfather, with Anko and Ibiki standing by, and had come to terms with what he had done. Anko had told him to find something to help him cope and he was currently searching. He'd find something soon enough. He had to, or he'd go crazy. He'd paid Kiba and Hinata back for the ramen and apologized. He'd played Shikamaru in a game of Go and Lost. He'd swapped chips with Choji and caught bugs with Shino. He'd played the good student. He'd beaten Sasuke down in every battle they had. He had been genial with Ino and was starting to let her in a little more, much to her delight. He was starting to notice a subtle difference in the girls around him, most notably Ino and Hinata. They seemed to be, developing. Enko still teased him about a possible three-way. Naruto had found how he could cope for the time being. He threw himself into his life. He relished in his friends and family. 
he watched as Konohamaru got his own private tutor, a nice man by the name of Ebisu, who was indifferent to Naruto at best. Naruto just shrugged the man off. He wasn't his sensei after all. His 13th birthday had come and gone with no incident. His family had gotten him a custom tailored cloak to work with his keke Janke. Anko had promised to try to get him as her apprentice. Guy had not been able to come, being out on a mission with his team, but had sworn to make it up. Naruto couldn't believe he hadn't met his old sensei's team yet. He kept shy of Sasuke and his little fan club if possible. He got closer to Hinata when possible. He was trying to work up the courage to ask her on a small date, just something simple. His mother insisted the two looked so cute together. Naruto just thought Hinata was nice. It had been a good few months and now it was one week from graduation and Naruto was sitting in the Hokage's office, chatting with his grandfather and Anko. I've been trying to decide who will be on teams, but I need help. Naruto, I want you to help me decide who should be divided amongst who. Your old academy sensei Kurenai has recently become a junin and has requested a team to ease into her new title. She, Kakashi, and your uncle Asuma are all viable candidates for teams. Naruto looked at the list of names and the team assignments. When he got to his name, he froze. Why am I paired with Uchiha Sasuke? Anko slammed her hand on the table in anger. I thought he was going to be my apprentice. Serutobi leveled a glare at the two and the killing intent he let out nearly suffocated them. Be quiet you two. I won't have such insubordination, especially from you two. Anko, I never promised to make him your apprentice. The boy needs to learn team dynamics. You may still teach him on the side. Anko's shoulders sagged, visibly crushed by the decision. She'd been looking forward to being a proper sensei. Not even being allowed to help could cushion the blow. Serutobi felt bad about his decision but turned to an angry Naruto. Sasuke needs someone to be a rival to him. He needs someone to measure himself against. You are that someone. Naruto looked at his grandfather in exasperation. Gigi, haven't you read the psychology reports on Uchiha Sasuke? He hates me and he only wants power. Putting the two of us together is a volatile situation just waiting to happen. I won't do it. You will do as I say Naruto. I need someone I can trust to keep an eye on that boy. I may be your grandfather, but here, in this office, I am your ruler and superior. What I say goes. Naruto glared at his grandfather. He was tired of being told what to do. No, I won't be on his team. Sarutobi's scowl could have lit his desk on fire. What did you say to me boy? I won't be on his team. This idea is stupid Gigi, especially for one of your intelligence. It won't work. I'll kill him the first week. And Kakashi is our sensei. The man doesn't care two wits about me. He'll spend all his time with Sasuke because they share the Sharingan. Sakura. She hates me because Sasuke doesn't. The team dynamic just isn't there, Gigi. You may as well just put me with Anko sensei. At least she and I get along. Anko smirked at the boy's counterpoint but Serutobi would not be swayed. You will be on the team and that is final. My word is law Naruto. You will do as I say. Tradition has the Hokage on a team of three and then you will take a team of your own when the time comes. Naruto stalked to the door. He could have melted out of the office but he really felt like slamming something at the moment. He turned to his grandfather with fire in his eyes. Tradition, tradition. It's always tradition with you Hokage-sama. I guess it was really traditional to seal a demon in a goddamn baby's stomach as well. Fuck tradition. Serutobi hollered out as the door slammed. You watch your mouth boy. The slam was deafening and he slumped back in his chair, looking at Anko. He's picked up your language I see. Anko merely glared at the Hokage. She'd get her word in as well. Like I said before Hokage-sama. Traditions have to be broken sometimes for the good of all. The boy asks for so little. Don't make him suffer just to make someone else's life easier. She bowed to the man and left, a lot quieter than her pupil. Serutobi looked at the picture of the Yondaimi and sighed. Minato, what should I do? The Uchiha is a flight risk, the psychologist said so. I need Naruto to watch him since he's the only one I can trust. But, his happiness and growth is at stake as well. What should I do? That thought plagued him for a couple of days until he made his decision. He would do what was best for, ooh, dot the power of youth compels me to leave you with cliffhangers. I suck, I know. 
Let me know what you think. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author. See you guys in the next video.